Welcome on in, ladies and gentlemen. The chop and the slow nothingness continues in the S&P. At least it feels like that to a lot of us. As you can see, we had the big move off of Jerome Powell, the FOMC speech, press conference, etc. Move up gap level overnight. And ever since Thursday, we have been in a channel to the downside, not giving back the entirety of the gains, but also not continuing higher and providing any continuation move off of that. So we continue to find ourselves in some sort of chop, although we are continuing on the larger time frames to trend higher. Hope you are doing great on this fine Monday. It is a short week in the stock market. The market is closed on Friday, which happens to have a lot of data coming out as well. We're gonna cover a couple things here in this video and get you out of here in just a few minutes. First things first, the charting platform we are using is TradingView. You can get $15 off any of the plans. Link in the video description box. We use a premium version. You don't have to. I would highly recommend the free version and then you upgrade if you want to as necessary. Love it. Use it all the time. And uh, we chart every every video is on TradingView. So yeah, there you go. Um, one of the first things I wanted to touch on was the 10 year, but then I want to get into some charts and some seasonality. The 10 year was the only thing that I think was worth to, well, not only thing. There is one more thing I want to pull up, but the 10 year bouncing a bit, right? But it's it, the same thing, right? It's trending to the downside, but again, in this little channel. So not a lot of crazy, you know, movement, right? On the 10 year, it was up, you know, over a percent. So it was notable on the day on Monday, but when it comes to seasonality, right? A lot of us are familiar with stock market seasonality. And, and we're aware of, of something like this. I don't need Donna customer service. No, not that. Uh, on the left, it, we're aware of charts that look like this, where on average, this is now somewhat outdated because it's been, you know, almost 10 years since 2015. But this is general, you're going to find a general similar gist. From 1964 to 2015, the stock market tends to do fairly well the first few months of the year, first third of the year. Then it has a period where they say sell in May and go away, meaning that nothing really happens from May through September on average. And then things pick back up for quarter four. That's what happens on average. And if you were to go by this March, we've been up so cool, but April actually is the strongest period of the year based off this chart, which is notable, right? So we're approaching, you know, the month that we should see maybe some better action. We'll see, hopefully, right? I guess from a momentum standpoint, we say, I say, hopefully, maybe you don't care. Maybe you don't want that. But let me take it a step further and let's jump over to the Dow Jones. So on an average election year, here's your seasonality. It's your blue line. So this like tan line, that line is the average, the Dow Jones average in general. Then this blue line is what happens during election year. So it's a similar situation to a degree, just not as exaggerated. And what I mean by that is we kind of follow outside of March, which on average actually tends to be down in the early stages and then rebounds back. We find that we kind of mirror the average Dow Jones year with a fairly you know, strong year end. We see a general trend up throughout most of the year, outside the first you know quarter, I guess, in, in, in election year. But we actually see a fairly strong June, July, August. And April is eh, not very much. It's up, but not much. Now, if you were to jump back to other years, pre-election years, the Dow Jones crushes it, blows it out the water out of pre-election year for whatever reason. Midterm election years, different story. But we kind of have this, this, this mix, right? So if you go off of an average election year, you know, what, we, what, what one would suspect is, well, we didn't really get what happened in March. We, we didn't really get that, to be honest. We had more of a consolidation, but we didn't really get a lot of down, down, downside. Some pullbacks, sure, along the way, but nothing crazy. April might be kind of choppy, but barely up. And then May's quiet. And then it picks up after that with the sell-off in the fall, early fall. And if you jump back to stock market seasonality, different story. So, we got conflicting views, something that I thought was worth mentioning as we approach this time of year, because it is, and you may see people starting to talk about how April is actually historically a really strong month. Yes, but not as strong necessarily in a election year. How much does that matter? Yeah, you can be the judge. At the end of the day, it's data points, it's probabilities, 
It's not about telling you what's going to happen next because nobody knows. And anybody who tells you or tries to make make you feel like they know, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, th those types of people are just, in my opinion, it's not worth bothering because either they, uh, they, they haven't been around long enough or they really are trying to fool you because there's no point in trying to tell you that that, that you know it's going to happen when you really don't. Uh, who, whose best interest, right, is that? So with that said, the next chart that I thought was notable was Bitcoin. And there's a chart request I want to pull up on Tesla and then we'll kind of we'll kind of call it a day. So Bitcoin breaking out. Now it was trending down for some time, but breaking to the upside here on Monday. So a very nice start to the week on Bitcoin, finished the day up over 5%. Very, very nice move. Now the thing about Bitcoin though, we were looking back is it was kind of in this downtrend, right? And it's finally broken that. It had this little push, little consolidation right here. Boom, broke it. And now Bitcoin is pushing higher. So that's awesome. Great. It's not that far off from all-time highs. It really only has to go another two or three, four thousand dollars and it's there. Not even four thousand three thousand dollars and it's there. And uh, then the question becomes, are we making a run for a hundred K? And I think that that's kind of where the thoughts gotta be. Not, you know, imminently, maybe, and of course anything can happen, but maybe more so in the next two to three months? Is that a realistic possibility? I, I see that, that, why not? I mean, if you think back to the end of February, you're sitting at 51,000. I mean, now we're sitting at 71,000, right? So in, in a span of a month, really a month, you know, a 40% move, even though it has kind of been, you know, muted as of late. So a 40% move from here now, of course, we're just saying, right? 40%, 40% from here puts you just shy of 100K. Just about 100k actually, so that's that's kind of the thoughts, right? It, it, are we we could be you know a couple weeks out from that if that's what's going to happen. Um, in the meantime, we do have a nice little break to the upside. I like the higher low. It's just a strong looking chart. That's all it really is. It's a strong chart, not beautiful, perfect break of this trend. No, it's not perfect, but it's a strong looking chart. And volume has been decent throughout the month of March. I notice the volume down here compared to what it was. It has some perks, but it's it's been a lot stronger, especially as of late. So there's that Tesla is an interesting stock because Tesla has been quiet. It's been almost too quiet as of late, right? It had this big breakdown, but then it's struggling. It's really just struggling at a level that was a prior area of support. It's now finding that to be a resistance. And could this, it's got some higher lows the past couple of days. Yes, yeah, sure. But could this just roll right back over? Sure, it could. If we see further weakness, if the stock market stays strong, it's just an interesting stock because right where it's at, at this 174 level, let's just call it 174, 175, this is, it's kind of like your zone. It's kind of your zone that it's, it's a, it's a important zone is what we'll say. If it can push up over 178, 180, looking at targets up towards 187, that's this little gap fill right here towards 187. And then we can talk more from there. That's the first area to watch. The next area of resistance would be up towards 206, 205, 206. That's what we'll be watching on Tesla if it can get up there. And as of support right now, it's kind of in a tricky spot. Underneath 160 does not look great in terms of downside. So watching that one closely. Under 160, I think a quick move down towards the low 150s, and then we'll have to see what happens there. There is a gap to fill down towards the 147 level, 146.50 area, if we see further weakness. That is the update for you. Hope it was helpful. If you are looking for a place to chart, track, journal all of your trades, Tradezilla would be the best recommendation for you. Code TC10 will save you 10% if you want to check it out. Thanks so much for watching. Leave any comments, questions, chart requests in the comment section, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.